What's up, guys? Welcome back to The Educated Barfly. Today, we've got a great cocktail for you called a Fairbanks on Loan, which is a cocktail created by a bartender named Brian Kane at the International in uh, Philadelphia. The Fairbanks on Loan is sort of a loose representation of another cocktail called a Fairbanks Number no. 1. The Fairbanks Number no. 1 was purportedly created at Sloppy Joe's Bar in Havana, Cuba, sometime in the 1920s or 30. I mean, there is a... I said sometime in the 1930, but I meant to say sometimes in the 1930s. Uh, there is a story that it was actually created for Douglas Fairbanks himself. And then there are some P, there are some like claims that sort of refute this. Um, but I will say that during Prohibition, Sloppy Joe's was like the number one hangout for Hollywood celebrities um, who wanted to go get a legal drink and had the means to fly down to Cuba to go get one. Uh, and they were jumping at that time. If you guys want to see, uh, like, uh, if you want to see a little bit of a Sloppy Joe's in its heyday, you can check out the movie Our Man in Havana, uh, starring Alec Guinness, who plays a guy recruited into the Secret Service in that very bar. So you can see a little bit of what it looked like uh, when it was at its height. Um, after the after Fidel Castro took power and the revolution happened, uh, obviously because its clientele were mostly American, its business took a nosedive, and it finally just closed and it's remained closed for 48 years. And then in 2013, there was a big renovation done and it was reopened. So it is open today. If you go down to Cuba, which is a lot easier to do these days, uh, you can, uh, Mary is shaking his head. Is it not easier to go to Cuba? I, I meet so many people who say they've gone to Cuba. Yeah, they, but they've been shutting it down now. Oh, because of Trump? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Trump has been shutting down, so maybe it's not. Under Obama, it was a little bit easier. Uh, a couple of my friends went to, but someone I just talked to was like, I just got back from Havana and they didn't have to go like, I mean, I think they had to go through Mexico or something because just because you can't fly directly from the US still, but under Obama, you couldn't yeah. drop, you couldn't fly. Oh, you could fly from Miami under Obama and then they shut it There's down again? flights from Miami, but if you're just going on vacation, Right. Unless it's like a cultural exchange or... Right. So you have to have a reason yeah. to go. Yeah. All right. That was a whole long aside uh, about getting to Havana. Um, and I kind of lost my train of thought. So, oh, Fairbanks on loan. So the Sloppy Joe's cocktail book uh, came out in 1935 and, and, and the original recipe purportedly was, was... no. So here's the deal. The cocktail had to have been created before 1935 because uh, Harry Craddock did a reconstruction of the original recipe in his Savoy cocktail book, and that came out in 1930. Uh, but the, the, Havana, the Sloppy Joe's cocktail book came out in 1935. Anyway, the original recipe was purportedly gin, apricot liqueur, lime, and an egg white. Uh, then Harry Craddock's version of it is gin, apricot liqueur, dry vermouth, lemon, grenadine, no egg white. Both of them served in a coupe. Uh, I'm not sure which one came first. I'm assuming that the Sloppy Joe's story seems a little bit more sensible to me just because like you can connect it to Hollywood stars. And, you know, since Craddock was working in London, I'm not really sure. I mean, maybe, I mean, obviously stars go to London too, but there's no account of Douglas Fairbanks going into the Savoy to... But maybe, maybe, maybe I don't know. I gotta do a little deeper dive. I'm gonna see what I can find, and uh, I'm going to get back to you on this. So I'm definitely gonna have to shoot a Fairbanks number one cocktail. That has taken us a little bit askew from where we're supposed to be going in this video, as far as this reconstruction. So Brian Kane did this loose interpretation of that Fairbanks number one cocktail, uh, and what I love about this cocktail is that he he basically made like a daiquiri on steroids but he created his own aperitif to put in there by putting a little bit of Lele, Chinar, and Campari together. And he calls this Lele Peritif, which is uh, one of the ingredients, kind of the secret kind of bitter ingredient in this cocktail. All right, I'm gonna get into it. That was a lot of talking. I'm definitely, I, if you look below, we have a, um, we have a little uh, skipper um, timestamp for you guys, so you guys don't have to. That's too late now. What do you mean it's too late now? You already washed it. You washed the whole rinse. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that yeah, to okay. <laughs> Touche. You watched the whole rinse. It's too late. Ha 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 ha. All right. First thing we're going to do is a uh, quarter of an ounce of lemon, quarter of an ounce of lime, quarter of an ounce honey syrup. Hey. 
half an ounce of our Lille Peritif. Three quarters of an ounce of gin. We are using beef eater today. And three quarters of an ounce of Stiggins fancy pineapple rum created by Plantation. The same people who make Pierre Ferrand cognac. And it is good. We're gonna add our ice. And shake. Drain it out into our coop. Give it a nice lemon twist. Mm, yum. Yeah, don't fall. And let's take a sip. Oh yeah, that's... You know, very well balanced. You taste that plantation pineapple that Stiggins fancy so well, but you know, the um, that bitterness on the back end from the Le Peritif is really good and so complex. You got just a little bit of honey to help it out, but it's really nice is that it's got that kind of, you know, honey syrup is actually sweeter than simple syrup but it has kind of a savory sweetness to it as opposed to the sharpness of sugar um, that really helps this kind of smooth out. You And you can really, the gin and the rum really go well together, but you get that like botanical hint just on the back end, right in the back of your throat. It's really good. So, oh, that is really good. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so I know you guys have been thinking about when you've been watching me. You're thinking that shirt is awesome, but it's also kind of weird. And there's a whole kind of interesting backstory behind the shirt. So Marius decided that he wanted to make a whole bunch of educated bar fly t-shirts that have pop culture references. But what's odd about that is that Usually when there's a pop culture reference, it sort of ties in a little bit better with the product you're trying to sell or whatever. So for instance, there's a company called Mover and Shaker. They make t-shirts that, um, that have different pop culture references tied in with alcohol or like tied in with cocktails, but they sort of make sense. What was the one that you saw from Mover and Shaker? Was it like, they have band t-shirts that are like old fashioned, it's done in the style of the Eagles. They're really cool. Anyway, Marius thought that it would be a good idea to make an educated barfly shirt look like Jurassic Park, which has nothing to do with cocktails or the educated barfly, but it's kind of a rad t-shirt. And I gotta tell you that I went to Disneyland, A, to take my kids to Disneyland for the fourth, but B, because I wanted to um, go to the cantina and have a cocktail at the cantina because there is a bar now in Disneyland that actually serves alcohol inside the park. It is the very first bar of its kind in Disneyland. There's like even Trader Sam's is outside the park in the hotel or like outside the hotel, uh, the Disneyland hotel, but they actually opened a cantina inside the Star Wars world. So I went to go have a drink there and everybody that saw the shirt was like, that is a rad shirt, what is it? So we have this, we're selling these now on our Teespring, limited edition, we're only selling them for a little while, Jurassic Park Educated Barfly, uh, just because, and I think you should get one, because they're awesome. And we're on, they're only gonna be around for a little bit. And when they're gone, guys, they're gone. Now, I drank so much of this, we're not really gonna be able to shoot the end screen, so I might as well just drink the whole fucking thing. Right? Right? I'm gonna drink the whole thing. Mmm. Oh, that is good. All right, guys. If you like our channel, please hit like and subscribe, and definitely check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash educatedbarfly. 
We do some awesome exclusive stuff there. And until then, cheers, my friends.